911 responders, what is a call that you will never forget? My first cardiac arrest call. An old lady had woken up to her husband not breathing. He'd passed at some point during the night it seems, but all I was given at the start of the call was that he wasn't breathing, so I launched into CPR instructions. They live out of town, so it took the ambulance crew about 25 minutes to get out to them. There was nothing crazy about the call and I've dealt with way more traumatic calls in the two years since, but at some point during the call, she realized he was gone and you could hear it in her voice. That shift in tone is what sticks with me. 911 dispatcher here. There's many that stick with me, but the absolute hardest one was a mother finding her child after the child had committed suicide by hanging. She was absolutely destroyed, but I could clearly hear her fighting to keep control as I walked her through getting the child down and attempting CPR. I knew the child was gone, but the mother refused to give up. I stayed with her on the phone and counted compressions with her while we waited for PD and the AMBO to arrive, listened to her alternate between counting and begging her child to come back. When the EMTs showed up and took over, she finally let it go. That scream broke me, and I can still hear it to this day. Man called to report a male was breaking into his neighbor's vehicle across the street. A few minutes into the call the man came and started to break into the caller's vehicle. A few minutes later the man spotted my caller and broke into his house from the window. Spent 10 minutes listening to physical fight when I finally heard the police enter the house and say there's blood everywhere. Both intruder and caller died. Oh, and another 911 dispatcher had my caller's wife and kids on another line who were hiding upstairs and heard everything. I talked a lot of people who were shot slash stabbed slash beaten in the final moments of their lives but you usually get them after the situation occurred. This caller was just trying to look out for his neighbor and I spent a good 15 to 20 minutes bantering while waiting for officers to arrive and get the auto thief. Getting to joke around and get to know someone's personality before they violently die hit a lot different than taking a call after violence had occurred. I'm not a first responder, but a dentistry student. Dentistry professionals can work in the hospital as trauma surgeons of the face. This facial surgeon showed us a case of a man that didn't pay his drug dealers, they took hit to an empty field and blew his face off with a shotgun and left. Surprisingly the man survived and woke up half an hour later and called the police, they spent hours trying to pinpoint his exact locating because at this point he was somewhere in the middle of an open field and obviously he didn't have eyes anymore to help them. He was taken to the hospital and his surgery took 18 hours but he did survive. Harley motorcycle tipped over and the clutch lever went into a four-year-old's eye. Parent was on the line asking what to do. Suddenly, she said, they're going lift the motorcycle. I emphatically told her to tell them to stop and wait for a rescue and EMS. Rescue ended up cutting off the clutch lever and transporting the kid to hospital. She underwent surgery. That was 1982. Just last year, I met the lead rescue officer and the girl herself, now fully grown. They wanted to meet the 911 operator that saved her vision. 18-year-old took mephedrone and attacked his mother with a knife. She locked herself in the bathroom and called 999, UK here. We turn up and the son is butt-ass naked climbing out the window in the front door which he'd smashed. He gets taken to the ground and cuffed. Me and another manage to crawl through the window without cutting ourselves and find mother inside. Places covered in blood smeared up the walls and every knife from the kitchen bloodied and discarded round the house. The adrenaline is just starting wear off as the paramedics arrive for mum and as they're treating her, we go to the kitchen and find a dismembered member sitting on the worktop. Turns out the kid had cut his own dong off after his mum locked herself in the bathroom. Man killed his wife with a kitchen knife and tried to kill his 7 year old son. The kid was stabbed in the shoulder and he had to run over his dead mom to get out of the house. His shoe print was in his mother's blood. That's something I remember. Someone called stating they had seen a man on a small island on the lake hours ago but now the man was gone and his boat is still out there. An older woman called in a half hour later stating her husband had gone missing, he was last seen taking his boat out on the lake sometime overnight. The increasing tension in her voice as she noticed sheriff's deputies were already dredging the lake was something else. She was calm but clearly actively dealing with the fact her husband was likely dead. They found his body not long after I hung up with her. Sometimes it's the people screaming that get to you, sometimes it's the quiet acceptance of a horrible truth that stays with you longer. Man blew his face off with a shotgun. Wasn't dead yet? Scary. Also, 
A couple weeks ago I responded to a woman in labor. Get on scene, she had just delivered. She was naked and holding the baby with the cord still coming out of her vagina. She was high as hell and trying to shoot up one last time before she went with us. With her bloodstream still feeding the baby through the cord. Little four-year-old girl got ran over by her grandmother with a lawnmower that was on. It was not the gore or the blood that got me, it was the utter panic of the family, and the way they broke down when the helicopter took off with her inside. This isn't mine, but a friend of mine fielded this call. An elderly gentleman called 911 to notify them that his wife had passed in her sleep. Only it was like 7 o'clock at night. Apparently he just couldn't deal with it emotionally, so he got her dressed, took her out to the car, and drove around doing his errands for the day watched some TV together. And then after 12 or so hours he finally sort of accepted that she was gone and called 911. My friend is a first responder. He once got a call about a man that had fallen in the shower. He gets there and the guy is over 400 pounds and out cold on the bathroom floor. My friend, his partner and the guy's roommate try everything they can think of to get the guy on the stretcher, but the bathroom is tiny and they can't even roll him over. Eventually they call two more ambulances and finally get the guy out of the bathroom. They get to the elevator and it's too small to fit the guy on the stretcher. So six paramedics have to carry the guy down five flights of stairs. My friend called in sick for the rest of the week cause he was so sore and stiff, he couldn't move. My father used to be a 911 dispatcher, was also an EMT for five years and a firefighter for over 30 years. Worst call he ever took was a woman who called that her house was on fire. She was trapped in the burning house and could not get out. First responders did not make it in time. He had to stay on the line with and listen to her as she burned to death. He also witnessed, while responding to a suicide call, one of his friends shoot himself in the face with a shotgun. He was still alive after the shotgun blast. They saved his life. He also responded to an ATV rollover of one of his friend's kids. ATV landed on the kid's face shattered his skull. His jaw was not longer attached. My dad had to hold his face together while they transported the kid to the hospital. An over 45-minute drive. Kids survived. Speaking for my mom, who was a 911 dispatcher for a long time who used to let me sit in and listen to calls way back in the day, a little old lady called the non-emergency number and said yes, hello. My name is so-and-so. How's your day going? Wonderful. Glad to hear it. Well, I just opened my freezer and I found a human head. What should I do? I was maybe 8 at the time, my mom ripped my headset out of the computer and made me go to the break room. Turns out, little old lady had a grandson who had an argument with his friend, not sure over what, and he hacked his friend up with a machete, stuffed him in granny's freezer and went on the run. I wasn't allowed to listen in on calls after that. Working as a deputy sheriff Got a 911 call to the local park for a dead body by suicide. Got there and this lady with a flashlight waved us down. As we approached we yelled out asking if she was the caller. She said yes. We yelled out again where is the body. She said right here, pulled out a gun, and committed suicide right in front of us. She wanted to make sure we found her body before the kids showed up the next morning to play in the park. I once had a call from a 11-year-old girl who was just stabbed by her stepfather, she kicked him in the balls and went to hide and call 911. She was scared and I stayed on the line until her stepfather found her. The last thing I heard was her yelling no please don't do it again. Then I heard an angry yell then gurgling. Turns out he stabbed her in the neck one minute before the police got there. I quit the next day. 16-year-old kid shoots himself in the head with his dad's gun. Someone driving on the interstate just happened to see his body slumped behind a an apartment complex garage as they were passing by. I went looking through his phone that was still unlocked from texting someone right before he killed himself. Turns out mom and dad had just divorced and dad moved with son to their new home in the city where I worked. Son had left a lot of friends behind, including a girlfriend. His girlfriend was apparently moving on and spending time with other guys, which upset the kid and led to him telling her if she didn't respond to his texts and let him know what was going on. It was the last time she was ever going to hear from him. The last text he got from her was do what you gotta do. I used to take 911 calls. One day this woman calls and says, my house is on fire and I'm trapped. She then put the phone down, but the line was open. 
I proceeded to listen to her scream for help as she slowly died and was consumed in flames. The first responders showed up on scene maybe a minute or two after she passed away. It turned out that her schizophrenic daughter committed arson with the intent of killing her own mother. The daughter was put in prison, where she put a bag over her own head and committed suicide. Thanks for tuning in to Reddit Streams. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for more videos. Share your views in the comments below.